So now let's talk about marginal abatement costs. And this is an image, a figure, from a report from McKinsey and Consulting, where I'm looking at global marginal abatement costs function. And so again, what's the marginal abatement cost? It's that incremental cost of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. What's interesting about this graph is that the area on the left side, or the, the region on the left side that, that's negative, those are actually situations where the cost is negative, which means that um, by not doing these things, people or firms um, are throwing away money. So some of these things are about residential electronics that, you know, for whatever reason people aren't doing, but they will save money even in a very short amount of time. Um, we understand that hybrid vehicles throws in there, yeah, it goes in there, um, uh, energy saving light bulbs, things that you may, you know, kind of be familiar with. What I'd like to call these are very low hanging fruit. And so um, economists actually spend quite a bit of time in this negative region because we're trying to see, okay, well, what, what, what accounts for that? What explains for that? Why are people, you know, not um, essentially saving themselves money? And there can be all kinds of reasons for that myopia. One, trust another, and just, uh, just the, you know, that people get inertia is really um, one thing. But anyway, there are a lot of behavioral economics on that. But it's the right-hand side, the, the, the part of the figure that's increasing, that uh, I want to focus on um, mostly in this class is that those positive uh, marginal abatement costs. And you can see that it's also increasing. And what this, why this is increasing is that as you get to different or I guess more, yeah, more expensive ways to reduce emissions, um, those kind of marginal or incremental reductions are more and more costly. So you think about what are the lowest hanging fruit in the side that's positive? Well, it's building efficiency, um, biofuels, land restoration projects, uh, forest, uh, forestation, um, relying more on nuclear power, that's one. Uh, not everyone's happy about that, but it is it is true, at least in terms of the environmental impacts, that they're much lower. Wind, solar, all this. When you get up and up into that graph, uh, higher and higher, those are kind of, okay, well, what, what do we need to do to get, the, you know, to reduce the, the last the, uh, units of emissions? And we know that a lot of that is going to require carbon capture and storage, the CCS. And so as we abate more and more, those kind of, you know, those, those, those later units are more costly than the earlier kind of low-hanging fruit units. The most important thing I want you to take away from this graph, and I know you can't read it at this font size, is the general shape. And we have abatement on that horizontal axis and monetary bonds here, is that as we abate more and more, as we reduce incrementally those units of emissions, you know, the, the earlier uh, abatement, the earlier units of emissions are going to be the cheapest, and then those kind of last units um, might even require like sucking carbon emissions out of the atmosphere, carbon, and it's not even just direct air capture and storage, that these things become more and more expensive. And so it's that right hand side of the graph of this McKinsey figure that we're going to kind of use as our, in our generalized model. And so this would be the marginal abatement cost. The next thing I want to do is kind of flip this because before when we talked about marginal damage, we had emissions on this horizontal axis. I want to keep emissions on my horizontal axis. And so it's going to be flipped where going from right to left is abatement and left to right is more emissions. All right, we've got our thing cleaned up, our graph, with the horizontal axis and emissions. So we know that this curve right? As the first units of emissions, if this is kind of what we're doing in an unregulated world, E with the superscript U, unregulated, these are the cheapest units to abate, and then they got really, really expensive, whatever, and this is going to be our marginal abatement cost. This is the one, this is the kind of general shape you should be thinking of, that the first units of emission control are cheaper, and then the last, you might have to actually, you know, start pulling things out of the upper atmosphere, very expensive, and that's what this shape reflects. And here's the general shape again. This is from The Economist magazine. I think, yeah, the source Goldman Sachs. But 
again, what I want to highlight here is that general shape that the first units of emissions may be the cheapest, right? It's, they're actually showing the, the negative side too, which is a lot more condensed, but a switch from coal to gas is in kind of that intermediate, kind of cheap range that we know is going to happen. It's inevitable. Switching from petrol or diesel to electric vehicles, when it's you know transportation for all the products we get, that's going to be a little bit more costly than kind of just our, our commuter or residential change. And then of course the carbon capture and storage, it's kind of shown up here as you know not abatable using technologies currently available, but recognizing that you know eventually we'll probably get there, but it's going to be costly to be pulling carbon or greenhouse gas emissions out of the atmosphere. All right, just like we do with marginal damage, let's explore a little bit more about those marginal abatement cost functions. So we'll often, and probably throughout the rest of this term, talk about max, marginal abatement cost functions. All right, we have our general, we have our general model, and if we think about emissions level E, lower bar, this, again, where it intersects this curve, this would be the marginal abatement cost at that unit of emissions, right? That's what it would cost to reduce the next unit if we're currently at E bar. Again, E uh, with the superscript U is the unregulated. Un, you need to spell correctly. Unregulated level of emissions. And what you do if nobody's, nobody's under your skin, right? Nobody is uh, setting up policies to change behavior. That's probably what. That's, that's what that captures what, what we're doing in status quo. Marginal abatement cost. Which means if we were moving from E under, you know, unrestricted emissions to some lower level E lower bar, this is the total abatement cost at E underscore bar. That's the total cost incurred in our economy for reducing those emissions, right? I mean, you think about what the cost of reducing emissions, you know, sometimes. If it's that switching uh, um, fuel source inputs into producing electricity, that is typically going to come with some some costs, right? We did see those low hanging fruit on the negative side. For the most part, there can be costs associated with that. Um, you know, if we can't use uh, uh, coal and we switch to natural gas, there could be costs associated with that. This could be changing the way that we build uh, our homes. You know, on a commercial level, it could be how we build firms and factories and industries. And uh, of course, transportation is a big one. We all get all our stuff delivered through Amazon and all this stuff, but those trucks are not running uh, on electric power right now. Moreover, even if everyone's running on electric power, that electricity has to be generated some way. And if it's all generated through fossil fuels, then we're not really saving or, or uh, it, uh, Mitigating or abating as much as we think we are, um, you know. Ideally, those electric vehicles would be powered by solar or wind uh, generated electricity. Anyway, so all those things go into this measure of what it costs to reduce emissions, right? If this was just zero across the board, this is just not an issue. It's just not an interesting. There's no opportunity cost, but we know there's an opportunity cost, right? We know. That if we're going to make a move here and reduce our emissions, it's going to be, it's going to have to take some cost. What economists care about is, well, what's the balancing act, right? We're going to get a benefit from that. We're going to get a cost from that. Where do we stop? What's the ideal level? And that's where we introduce in the next video, of course, the efficient level of emissions. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is aggregating individual marginal abatement costs, let's say, of firms. I think a good example to keep in mind here is like electric plants, electric utilities generating electricity and um, their, the, their respective costs of reducing emissions. So individually we could have different firms. So let's say we have, you know, this is firm one and this is Mac one and or I'll go lower and then I don't know. This is firm two. Maybe they emit more um, to begin with. A bigger plant. Maybe they have different inputs into production. They can have different geographic uh, area that makes emissions control easier or harder. 
And then this would be the emissions level, at the unregulated level for one. This would be the emissions level at the unregulated level for two. And just like any sort of ordinary demand curve, it kind of looks like a demand curve, a downward sloping is demand for emissions, you can think of. This is firm's demand for emissions. They love to be here. And if for some reason they have to reduce emissions, they're going to incur that cost. But if you aggregate these, you aggregate these in the same way you would aggregate demand, which means you aggregate horizontally. And so if I had these linear functions, you could just kind of solve for E and add them up. But graphically, this is how this would look. Look, right? We have this level of emissions for firm one, we have this level of emissions for firm two. And so capital E, U, would be the aggregate level of emissions in this industry. And it would be the sum of all of the individual marginal payment costs, and we call this AMAC. Aggregate aggregate marginal payment costs. So when we're thinking individual firms, you can look like this. We could use that lowercase e. But for the, you know, not always, but often, we're going to be looking also at aggregate levels, like either the global, if we're talking about climate change or something, or regional. And that's everybody, like the McKinsey graph, right, of those marginal payment costs. That was an AMAC curve. All the sectors and all the industries and, and, and aggregating. And this is how that aggregation would look. The more firms you have, the bigger that emissions number would be. And as things become cheaper, right, that this thing becomes flatter. If things become more expensive for whatever reason, this would become steeper. So it's good to kind of get the intuition of individual marginal payment costs and AMAC.